Okay, this lesson is about mole ratio, and this is covered in section 7.1 of your textbook. A super, super important lesson. A short one, but a super important one. Okay, you'll see that I've started you off with a balanced equation. Two molecules of H2 react with one molecule of O2 to form, well, we can see in the balanced equation here, two molecules of water. Now what's that look like if we draw a picture? So I'm going to the Lewis diagrams that you're familiar with from unit one. So here are two molecules of H2. Notice the red two. That's why I've drawn two of these particles. What does each particle look like? Two hydrogens together. Now we have one molecule of O2. So here's the O2 molecule. Think about breaking the bonds in these reactant particles and using only these atoms to form products. I'd like to form water, so I've got H here, O and H, and then H, O and H. So you can see that I finish with two water molecules. So to be super clear, the coefficients in the balanced equation are not additive. We don't say two plus one equals 2. We know 2 plus 1 equals 3. So in fact, this relationship is not additive. We look at the ratio and see that two molecules of H2 react with one molecule of O2. And when all these bonds break and new bonds form, we form two product particles of water. So in the next setup, I've said, okay, well, now in this ratio here, we have four molecules of O2. Here they are. So how many molecules of H2 will we need so that all four molecules of O2 get used up to form water particles? So see if you can figure that out. Pause the video, and when you've drawn in what you need and filled in the number of molecules, check back with the video. So you can see that I've drawn eight H2 particles so that each of these oxygens will have two hydrogens to form a water molecule. And so it turns out that eight of those H2 molecules react with four of the O2 in order to form eight water molecules. So just checking out these ratios on the side here, we had two to one to two, and now we have eight to four to eight. So when you compare that to the ratio of the balancing coefficients in the balanced equation, You'll notice that each of these is that ratio, 2 to 1 to 2 in lowest terms. If you divide here by 4, it will reduce to 2 to 1 to 2. Okay, now it does get tedious drawing everything out, so how about, what if we had 12 molecules? So if you have 12 molecules, how many molecules of O2 will you need? Hopefully working with that ratio, you'll see in a ratio of 2 to 1 that 12 to 6 would be in a ratio of 2 to 1. And that will produce 12 molecules of water. Well, isn't 12 of anything really just one dozen? So instead of writing 12, I'm going to write one dozen. And I see here that 6 is then half a dozen. And 12 is one dozen. And so I have these numbers 1 to 0 0.5 to 1, which is also a ratio of 2 to 1 to 2. And so we see this consistent 2 to 1 to 2 ratio showing up in all of these examples. Now what if we had 24? 24 to 12 to 24. Okay, so now we have two dozen. And if we had 12, we have one dozen, and 24 water, which is really two dozen. And so again, we see that two to one to two. Now what if you had two times Avogadro's number of molecules of H2, and one times Avogadro's number of molecules of O2, and that formed two times Avogadro's number of molecules of water. Isn't that really just the same as having two moles to one mole to two moles? It certainly is. And so, because we work with matter, 
such tiny, tiny particles on, in such large groupings in the mole, we end up calling the coefficients in the balanced equation, so this 2, 1, and 2, we call them a mole ratio. And so that was the title of the lesson. And we're learning now that the mole ratio, right, is related to the balancing coefficients in your balanced equation. And so if we had a different reaction, perhaps the synthesis of ammonia from its elements, when we go ahead and balance this equation, we'll see that the ratio of N2 particles to H2 particles to ammonia particles follows the balancing coefficients of 1 to 3 to 2. And so that's the idea of a mole ratio. We use the balancing coefficients to relate amounts of reactants and products. And that is really what we do when we're solving stoichiometry problems. And so this strange looking word is what we're going to be solving stoichiometric problems and really they are they involve relating amounts of substances reacting and being produced in a chemical equation a chemical reaction so an example of a question that you would need to use the mole ratio for would look like this Okay, so here's that same reaction, the synthesis of ammonia. Part A, what amount of hydrogen gas is required to produce 8 moles of ammonia? So definitely step one, we always start with a balanced equation. So that's key. Make sure you always start with a balanced equation. Next, list the given. So when I say list the given, the fact that this said 8 moles of NH3, I find NH3 in the equation, I see it in the products, and I list... The, the value with the unit. Now I'm asked to find, so the required is here, the amount of H2. So I come over to where the H2 is and I recognize that that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so factor label method, same as always. What we're looking for, the required goes on the left side of the equal sign, so we're looking for the moles of H2. And what we have to start with goes on the right side of the equal sign. So starting with 8 moles of NH3. Set up your conversion factor, copying the unit down so that it will cancel. There's N moles or moles of NH3. And now we're converting to the moles of hydrogen. So I'm going to switch colors here and go to the coefficients 3 and 2 from the balanced equation. So again, this is a mole ratio from the balanced equation. And again, that's the key, right? It's very simply that. The coefficients in the balanced equation relate moles of one substance to moles of another. So we can go ahead and cancel the units, moles of NH3, and that leaves us with moles of H2, which is what we were trying to find. So 8 times 3 divided by 2, 12 moles of H2. Okay, part B is asking us what amount of N2 is required to produce the same 8 moles of ammonia. So go ahead and work that one out and then check back with the video. Okay, so the required was the moles of N2 starting with 8 moles of NH3 and I set it up so that moles of NH3 will be on the bottom to cancel and we move ahead then to moles of N2. Fill in the balancing coefficients for N2 and NH3 here we have the 1 and the 2, and 8 times 1 divided by 2, 4 moles of N2. Okay, so have a look at the results of this, these two calculations then. So we notice that to produce the 8 moles of NH3 over here, it took 12 moles of H2 and 4 moles of N2. 
And so just to check out those numbers, 4 to 12 to 8, if you reduce that, dividing each by 4, you'd come up with 1 to 3 to 2. And isn't that the same ratio as we saw in the balanced equation? So when that's the case, when you have amounts in moles that follow the coefficients in the balanced equation, then this is called stoichiometric amounts. So amounts, again, we think of that word that makes us think of moles, and stoichiometry makes us think of the balancing coefficients. And so stoichiometric amounts are when you have amounts of reactants and products existing in the same ratio as the balancing coefficient. So you can see 4 to 12 to 8 are the stoichiometric amounts for this reaction. Now, is there a different set of stoichiometric amounts? Sure, any ratio that combines in the ratio of 1 to 3 to 2. And that's it for mole ratio.